The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Monday morning, 9.06 a.m. Thanks for starting your trading day off with me. And we got markets basically flat, but a little bit of a pullback in the last hour or so. You were up at a high pre-market in the S&Ps. You're talking about 45, 48. We trade down about 15 points over the last hour or so. We're trading right now negative by three points in the S&Ps, trading at 45, 33. You look at the acceleration we had from about 3 a.m. on, the S&Ps accelerating about 33 points from lows at three in the morning of 45, 15, up to 45, 48. We jump over to Europe in terms of where we are this morning. The DAX up 1.4 percent, FTSE up 4 tenths percent, Cacarole up 4 tenths, uh, excuse me, up 1.4 percent as well. So you see the charge higher as Europe was open in the last hour, though, as we get ready for the open here. A uh, little bit of negative action pulling us back to basically break even across the board. Over in Asia, Nikkei is down about 7 tenths percent. You got the Shanghai is flat right now. Jumping over to the NASDAQ 100. Pretty similar action. You trade higher, almost up to the highs we had on Friday. You pull back a bit. NASDAQ 100, the only major index futures currently barely in the positive right now. Dow's negative by 30. Russell, negative by 4. Bitcoin catching a bid. Check out that acceleration over the weekend. Markets, a little bit negative action. Bitcoin, not so much, man. You're inching towards 48,000. Quite the acceleration last week. We put Bitcoin on a daily. Let's put it on a weekly, actually, to see the full context. Uh, if you are trading Bitcoin, I put this trend line on your chart here. Bounced on it a couple times. That was a nice buy when it was down there a couple times. We're rising to 47,510. Anybody's guess where this thing goes in the future, though? Ethereum. Look at that pop. Ethereum, 3,300 uh, on Ethereum. Folks, February 21st, you were trading at 2300 a 1000 bucks in just over a month in Ethereum. Not surprising why people love the crypto market. Crude, putting crude back on a daily, quite a little drop-off we got going on crude. We're down $7.21 right now. Zooming in on the action of the volatility recently, February 25th, things really start to go parabolic up to 130. You come back down to 95. This time we make it up to a high of 116.64 on a daily basis, though. You see that's quite a red bar, putting it back to a 15 minute to see the action. You're up to 116 on Thursday. Futures opened last night with even a 112 handle, and it's been a one-way trip. And even as we speak, these moves in crude would be remarkable in any other context. Putting it on a one-minute, folks, just for some context. Since I've been on the air, crude is down a dollar and twenty cents, folks. My show began three minutes and 17 seconds ago, and crude is down a buck twenty. Talk about volatility in that market. Back to a 15-minute chart. Gold. Volatility in both directions as well. Get ready for a wild week, folks. We have gold uh, down $16, but look at gold catching a bit over the last hour from 1927 up to 1945. You're at 1937 right now, and we jump to notes and bonds. Quite the week last week, we had yields rising to, I think, uh, I mean, we probably got a 2.5 handle last night because we're sitting at about 2.46. 2.46, remarkable, the acceleration we've had in yields. Uh, we're sitting at about 2.4. 5%, call it, on the yield on the 10-year. We'll talk about uh, some of the yields. It seems to be it's all the talk, but, uh, boy, you want to pay attention, folks, to the bond market, to the note market, the amount of money that is in that market. It is a very intelligent market because you can't be wrong when you have that type of money plowing into that market. It is usually an indicator of things to come, and we're getting real close to some scary stuff in terms of inversion like we're talking about. The only thing I'll say is, Past performance is not indicative of future results, right? There are a lot of variables in play right now. Uh, we have many, many, many economic indicators that continue to come out, right? Record-breaking, record-breaking CPI, record-breaking jobless claims last week, uh, et cetera, et cetera. 
all the variables don't line up exactly how they have in history. It'd be interesting to see if we do get a yield inversion. We're getting really close enough that it should be paying attention anyway. And we'll pull up the article, like I said, a uh, great article from Bloomberg, just talking about some of the inversions, some of how it looked in history. But man, this market, folks, is nothing like any market I've ever experienced in history. When you think about not only do you have the inflationary tendencies which have been present before right you can compare the time we're at right now to history uh you can compare times when we're facing turmoil because of war in history supply chain shortages etc but dealing with the pandemic causing supply chain shortages causing wages to continue to rise you have a, a labor market that's unlike any other where Finally, employees look to have a little bit of an upper hand, leaving jobs, demanding pay increases. Uh, point being, there are so many variables in play that we've never seen before. And I don't know how they all contribute to a yield inversion, not pointing to a recession. But just keep it in mind, because we have a Fed that's hiking at a dramatic rate that we've never seen in my lifetime before. OK, I guess I was probably a toddler when they were doing it in the 80s. I was born in 1980. Uh, we have the Fed lifting off at that rate. I mean, we had City coming out Friday. The next four meetings is 50 basis points. The next two after that is a quarter point. That's 2.5% of an increase over the next six meetings from the Fed. That's after they've already risen by a quarter basis point. I mean, consensus, even among friends in the industry, means seems to be at least 50 basis points at the next meeting, potentially, and maybe the meeting after that. But to already say four meetings, there's going to be a lot of data we get by the fourth Fed meeting, okay? And Citi's call was Fed dependent, uh, excuse me, data dependent, not Fed dependent, might as well be Fed dependent, data dependent, but we're gonna get a lot of data by the time they're coming out with their fourth meeting. Doesn't necessarily mean that those rate hikes are gonna start contributing to the pullback maybe and the inflationary tendencies they're talking about, but you just get the market maybe pulling those back. Maybe supply chain shortages work their way out. Not sure that's going to happen, but we will see. All right, let's jump around to some of the stocks that are making news this morning. Tesla, Elon Musk, he wants to split again. Why not? Uh, he was out on Twitter, I believe. Uh, let's see. Let's see where we got going on on Tesla. Uh, pulling the article over here. Of course, a couple articles. I think I have it up. To, eh, we'll jump to this one. So they're seeking approval for another stock split. Tweets first, issues regulatory, regulatory filing later on plan so they are uh elon is is ruling by tweet as tesla gained in early trading after the car maker said it plans to seek shareholder approval for a move that would enable its second stock split in roughly two years uh and you see the acceleration on that amazon announcing a similar uh tesla if you recall put this back on the daily how far do we have to go back to to find that split Geez, I'll have to look up the, the date of the split at the break because, man, this thing just took off the last time it split. It was almost the beginning of the run. We'll pull it up. But nonetheless, the move on Tesla, man, you just pull up Tesla. Let's put it on a 20-day chart going back an hourly. 755 to 1,063. You're up more than $300 from where it was trading at March 15, 13 days ago. Folks, 13 days ago. And you're up, what, 40%? No, it's going to be more. Yeah, 40% on Tesla. <sighs> Remarkable, the move in that equity. Apple, a little bit of a different, well, they got some production issues. We'll get into that after the break. Apple down about $2.72. Again, keeping in mind, every single shit, uh, dollar that Apple trades, you're talking about more than $16 billion in market cap. So that haircut over the weekend, boy, you're talking about, what, almost a $40 billion market cap. But look at the run that Apple's had, again, in context. Apple on March 15th, you want to talk about a run. What are you talking about, 24 bucks? Since then, what's that adding? 340, 340 billion dollars in market cap. Stay tuned, folks. We got a lot to cover. It's Monday. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps negative by three points. NASDAQ 100 barely gang, hanging on to the gains. Uh, decent when you think about the facts that you fact that you have Apple down, whoops, AAPL, down a solid, what, $2.80 right now. You're talking about uh, close to 2%, something like that. And meanwhile, you have the index in the positive territory. We jump around to some of the other FANG stocks right now. You have Amazon barely in the positive by a few dollars. You jump to Microsoft shares, Microsoft barely flat. Now we do have Tesla trading up, which is gonna put a bit in there, up about 50. So that's about four to 5% was as high as 1,079. We jump over to Google shares, uh, basically flat as well. All the markets kind of waiting for the open in about 11 minutes. All right, jumping around to what else we have up here. Let's take a look at the yield curve. Like I was talking about as we get ready for the open, it's a reliable recession indicator and it may be sending a false alarm. Now this is the Business Week article here. They talk about a number of different things, uh, close to inverting, and as they say though, not for the usual reasons. Now folks, I mean, you can almost put it in an opinion piece because boy, if you can figure out the reason why yields are close to inverting and why it may be different than history, then you may be able to make a lot of money as the history uh, unfolds for this year and how things may shake out. In recent days, the U.S. yield curve has quickly been flattening. The spread between the 10-year Treasury bond and the two-year note dipped to as low as 17 basis points, the level seen in January 2020. Uh, when the coronavirus first broke out in China. The U.S. went into a recession a month later. The 10- and 2-year spread inverted, preceding each of the last eight recessions. So is the looming inversion a sign of another recession to come? Not necessarily. So they talk about many things. When you put the yield spread between the 10 and the 2 on a chart here, all right, you go back and they talk about whether you're talking about 80, whether you're talking about 81. Uh, they have an inversion there in 89. And what's happening is here, you, you have the gray area in recession. Okay, so it precedes that is what happens, folks. It's a leading indicator, usually. Um, but the yield curve is getting flatter in design. The Fed has been propping up the economy in two ways, keeping its crucial short-term Fed funds rate near zero and by quantitative easing, buying Treasury securities to help 
keep longer term rates down. Now to fight inflation, as we know, they're going to be in hiking those. Uh, the price of the federal funds futures indicates that investors expect the central bank to raise eight times. Uh, so that's two percentage points by year end. Now, remember, the the forecast I gave you on Citi is only 2.5. And that one sounds staggering. At 2.5, they got to hike it to the tune of 50 basis points on four meetings and then a quarter point for the next two. Nonetheless, we're going to see how it shakes out. Um, but keep your eye on that one, because anytime you have an indicator that is that consistent, as in you get an inversion in that yield curve, folks, just be careful uh, in terms of you want to be aware of it, to say that, to say it the least. All right, jumping around to what other stories we have in here. Let's jump down the list in some of the stocks. We talked about Tesla. Beyond Meat, they are lower in the pre-market as they get a downgrade to neutral from underweight. Uh, they point to increasing competition for plant-based meat substitutes as well as lower positive expectations for the impact of their McDonald's launch. Now, this one's always interesting because they're definitely a leader uh, in that category. But boy, you put this thing on a chart you're going to open at about 45 bucks, and basically you're opening near lows that we've been. And I remember when this thing was pushing 239 back in 2019. I remember being on the air with my dad. I remember us talking about comparing it to Tyson Foods, because Tyson, I believe, was an investor in Beyond. I'll pull it up. It was one of the. It might have been Impossible, but I think it was Beyond. And they actually sold their stake as they went public or leading up to it. And the reason why they did is because they were going to get into the business too. And then you had Beyond Meat escalate to a point that almost made it. The comparison, just tough to understand when you think about the infrastructure and process build out a company like Tyson would have versus a company like Beyond. Well, almost how many years later? Almost two full years later. No, three. One, two. Yeah, almost. So two and a half years later, uh, Beyond Meat trading basically at lows. Now, you jump over to the Analyze tab. All right. You're still talking about a company valued at $3 billion at this price. Now, what's crazy is you jump over to Tyson talking about a company valued at 31 billion dollars now out of curiosity here you back up tyson yeah and look at tyson tyson's basically at the same prices that you were at back then okay so tyson was a 31 billion dollar company at that time and i remember that beyond meat was pushing like 15 to 20 billion i said folks how does that make sense right tyson foods you're familiar with the meat they do they're going to have a competitor beyond and meanwhile you're telling me this 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 fake meat company that just came out is going to be worth more than tyson's going to be and keep, you know, at some point, have some reason in the market, folks, when you see those types of runs, because that one made no sense. And it made no sense at that time, for sure. And the last two and a half years have not played out kindly. I mean, you know, fake meat, folks, it does have a place, but uh, things got a little ahead of themselves. We'll leave it at that, to put it lightly. Coinbase, uh, near a deal to buy uh, a Brazilian cryptocurrency brokerage, Mercado Bitcoin. Uh, the paper said the deal could be closed by the end of April. Now, Coinbase is up, but guess what? Coinbase is going to be up because Bitcoin and Ether is rocking right now. Coinbase is up seven bucks. So you're going to get a pop. You're getting a pop on that news. But anytime you've got cryptos, look at the pop you get. That is the crypto pop, folks. When you got Bitcoin rocking over the weekend, I was seeing tweets out there saying the king is back is what they were talking about, uh, talking about Bitcoin. We'll see if it's back, but nonetheless, Coinbase getting a pop with Bitcoin. Now, you put Coinbase on the weekly. Be careful, folks, because you get up to 225 on this equity. Now, you want to make a trade. You're at 193 right now, okay? Yeah, it could pop to 225. Maybe you rise up to the highs you had from early February of 217. But you're going to face a lot of headwind, man, in 225, because you're talking about going back to anybody in this equity prior to January of this year, Right? That would get them potentially, you start getting into anybody below that's in a losing position, still a 225, right? That's where it's bounced late in 2021. That's where it bounced in October. It's where it bounced in July, basically chopped around from May through July. So be careful with Coinbase. Now, you want to talk about valuations. $42 billion market cap. Uh, they're growing dramatically. Crypto is here to stay forever, but you're going to get some big competitors in crypto um, in a big way. So... They're not going to be the only player, folks, forever. And that's quite a valuation, to say the least. So Apple, they're going to cut. I talked about this. iPhone SE output by 20% next quarter. 
weaker than expected demand in there. I think they had some product, production issues I saw as well. Nonetheless, not good news for Apple. We talked about Apple down more than $2 in the pre-market. And now you have the NASDAQ 100 rolling over all the indices in the red as we got about four minutes to go until the opening bell. Foot Locker, they're negative as well. They get a downgrade to market perform from outperform at Cohen despite an inexpensive valuation. Investors may be underappreciating the potential the potential impact of inflation. Okay, uh, I was like underappreciating. Wait, but it's a downgrade. No, they're underappreciating potential for inflation hitting Foot Locker. Now, Foot Locker's been in trouble, man. Um, and this is one of those equities that you really got to watch out for, folks, because they're in the business of selling Nikes for a while. They lived and died off it. And the last earnings they came out with they're actually going to start decreasing how many Nikes they sell. At the same time, you have Nike transitioning to direct sales. And at some point, Foot Locker is just selling other people's shoes, and we all know how it goes. Do you really have such a niche a niche like that to be in it? Maybe they can be in malls and get enough traffic that you get people walking in. Um, but that's a tough one. And they talked about valuations. You jump over, and that's what they're talking about. People are saying, hey, it's a $3 billion market cap. You know, how low can it go? Well, you've got inflationary problems. You can't make any money, and you're not selling Nikes like you used to. That might be a problem, folks. Foot Locker, right where it was at in 2017. We'll be right back for the open. Stay tuned. Are you having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational webinars for all trading levels and make sure you check out tiger tv for free on tfnn.com or tfnn's youtube channel for live financial content from 8 30 a.m to 4 p.m eastern on market days stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be tfnn educating investors TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open and Apple. To, so to uh, restate the, the news on Apple, just so everyone is clear, it is a production cut by choice because of a demand wane. Apple is going to cut the SE output by around 20% next quarter. They're cutting that production uh, by a fifth amid lower demand for consumer electronics. So that is the deal. That is the deal. Uh, that's a much more worrisome than a production problem, in my opinion, because a production problem can work itself out over the next year or two, potentially. And that's a long time, maybe next year, maybe the next three, six, nine, 12 months. But if demand is constant, then some of these companies can overcome that. But if they start seeing demand problems, that's going to be a problem, folks, folks, in the face of everything else. Um, after nine straight sessions of gains, though, folks, Come on, right? I mean, we all know, can't go one way forever. Uh, Apple pulls back a bit. They're gonna cut the output of the iPhone SE by about 20% next quarter compared with the original plan because science that consumer electronics demand is being hurt by the war in Ukraine and rising inflation. They told multiple suppliers it was lowering production orders by two to three million units for the quarter. Uh, Apple this month updated its iPhone SE line for the first time since 2020, added 5G network support, possibly in an effort to persuade consumers with older iPhones to upgrade and to lure Android users. They also caught orders for AirPod earphones by more than 10 million units for 2022. Since 2016, AirPods have become the most widely sold truly wireless earphone, helping Apple grab more than 25% global market share. Think about that, right? Earphones, something so simple, but boy, when you're selling them, only Apple could figure out how to sell earphones for 100 bucks to 250 bucks and corner 25% of the market at those prices. But that's how you become the biggest company in the world. Now, the one thing that's intriguing here on Apple, you know, when Steve Jobs got pushed out of Apple and then Apple was faltering dramatically, I was still very young at that time, but one thing I remember of the stories at least of him coming back was he came back and he said, you guys got way too many models, right? They had like 15 different models of a desktop, 15 different models of whatever they had. He said, listen, we need a desktop, we need a mobile, and we need like, that's it, you know? And they made their exact computers for each one. I almost see them doing the same. I can't even keep track as an Apple fan. I cannot keep track of how many phones they have, what the SE is, what that does, what the big one does. Uh, not saying it's gonna be the same thing that happens again, but they can't appease everybody with all different kinds of phones. And I kind of feel like that's what they're trying to do. And I wonder if that'll actually come back to bite them, spreading themselves a little bit too thin, trying to go after every single person. Because if you make a phone good enough to go after, uh, the much more affordable market of Android. I mean, there's some great Android phones out there, folks, for not that much money. When you think about where we were, I was going to say 20 years ago, because I was thinking chatting about college recently, um, didn't even have phones at all, let alone we were where five years ago what a phone could do or 10 years ago what a phone could do. The cheapest Android phones out there can do almost anything. You know, and then you really up the ante when you get into some of the bells and whistles of the Apple phones and their speed and the integration and all that stuff. But if you're going to be releasing Apple phones, it can be part of the Apple ecosystem at a very affordable rate. And you have this whole product of lines that just might come back to bite them as it did with the computers uh, early on. And Jobs had to come back and write the ship. So nonetheless, they got to cut output by 20%. We'll see how they trade today, though. The market, uh, it's been up for nine straight sessions to keep things in some context, folks. All right, jumping around, let's take a look at some of the other equities as we're looking at. Let's see how some of the stocks are opening up in the FANG world. We got Amazon popping a bit. You get the NASDAQ 100 up 50 points on the open. There's a pop for you. Amazon up about 7 tenths percent. Let's see how Apple is opening on that news. Apple. Yeah, they don't they don't they don't mind too much. Just remarkable, man. Apple uh, up a buck fifty on the open, even cutting twenty percent because of demand problems potentially for Apple. We jump to Microsoft shares. Microsoft, there's a pop for you, up one point one percent, man. The Fang stocks, watch out. Google down a bit and jump to Tesla shares. There's a pop for you, up 4.6%. We jump over to Netflix shares this morning. Netflix up 1% as well. We jump over to Disney. Disney flat. We jump to Uber. Uber's up 1.4%. I think I saw they won uh, another 30-month license to operate in London, and they've been having some real problems uh, with operating in London. Uh, of course, one of the biggest cities they operate in. And you're getting a pop by about 40 cents this morning for Uber. Let's jump around to some of the airlines. I'm always interested to keep track. We got the airlines higher again today. We got Delta up 7 tenths percent. I mean, look at the run these things have had. We'll put it on daily real quick. 
from the lows of March 8th, man, Delta up eight bucks. You're talking about, what is that, 25, 26% for Delta Airlines? I mean, things looked dire when war broke out and, and fear was at its height. You got United barely in the positive today. We jumped to American Airlines barely in the positive. Domestically, JetBlue up about a half a percent. Southwest Airlines up about a half a percent. Keep my eye on Boeing. Boeing in negative territory. Keep your eye on Boeing on this trend channel line. Uh, it's been pretty consistent recently. You put this thing on a weekly, the channel draws itself almost. Uh, we are near the bottom portion, but nothing to say we don't come back down and bounce it. I like trading this potentially at the upper or lower boundary lines of that channel line. Pretty well defined, going on about a year, which is remarkable. Even more remarkable, Boeing, a year ago, trading at 278. Today, trading at 187. So much for being out of the pandemic in March of 2021. Market getting a little bit ahead of itself, to put it lightly. Some of the travel stocks keeping with Airbnb, back to a daily chart, up a bit with the NASDAQ 100 as the NASDAQ 100 now up 77 points. Airbnb up about six tenths percent right now we check in on bitcoin up and even three thousand bucks crude holding at about 106 we pull back seven dollars and 76 cents in gold continuing to slide a bit gold down 21 dollars that's 1.1 percent at 1932 if you haven't checked out the gold report yet folks my dad's outstanding newsletter uh he's got a new issue comes out every monday i believe that issue for this week if you're a current subscriber gonna be out uh between the 10 and 11 o'clock hours so if you haven't tried it folks a great time to try out the gold report on mondays uh all the newsletters we offer at tfnn New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you don't like it, you can cancel it. Let us know you'd like the 30-day money-back guarantee. No questions asked. Uh, we give it to you. That way you can try those letters without being uh, having anything at risk. All right, jumping around to some of the headlines I got pulled up here as well. Where are we going to jump to? How about this? Yeah, this one will be interesting to see how it it plays out. Uh, the story here, regulators are worried that retail traders are getting in over their heads. Now, I imagine sometimes this happens, folks, especially when you get the Robin Hoods out there really, you know, letting people probably get in over their heads. But in general, they're talking about options and they're talking about inverse ETFs. These kind of, quote unquote, complex investment products have exploded in popularity over the last several years. Here's the bad news. Regulators are getting worried that you may be getting in over your head. And they seem to be looking to erect more, quote unquote, guardrails. OK, now FINRA is sending the warning signal. That's the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority. OK, uh, they regulate all brokerage firms and exchanges in the U.S. Uh, reminding they sent. Let's see. They released a regulatory notice to members reminding them of the risks of these complex products and the legal obligations they have of making sure their investors in the products are suitable for them. Their number of accounts trading in the complex products and options has increased significantly. However, important regulatory concerns arise when investors trade complex products without understanding their unique characteristics and risks. Uh, FINRA reminded its members that regulation best interest, which was adopted in 2020, requires brokers to act in the best interest of their customer when making those recommendations. We're gonna finish up with this. We'll see how it plays out. I imagine most investors do know what they're doing, folks. All right, and we'll, we'll talk about this when we get back. Stay tuned. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets trending in positive territory. Don't sleep on the NASDAQ 100. That's for sure. You got the S&Ps right now climbing back to flat. We're up about six points from where we opened. NASDAQ 100 up 107 points, catching a pop, 14,870. Uh, looks like we're bumping up against 15,000, folks. NASDAQ 100 just traded up. We were in the red coming into the open there. We're positive by eight tenths percent right now in the NASDAQ 100. Uh, Going to jump to a little bit of non-stock news if you saw the oscars last night uh, i did not but boy i saw the headlines this morning will smith unfortunate series of events uh smacking chris rock the host uh out there chris rock with uh, a lame joke basically it Jada Pinkett Smith, Will's wife, uh, saying that she could be in the next G.I. Jane 2 because uh, it appears as, with, as if she has a shaved head. She has alopecia, a disease which causes hair loss. I mean, folks, if you're a big a star as Will Smith, he was up for Best Actor, and he ended up winning Best Actor. Uh, he's been around forever. Him and his wife constantly in the press. Of course, some pretty mundane lame jokes are going to be directed at the biggest stars of Oscar night. He walked up there, slapped Chris Rock in the face, and then screamed at him a couple times. Uh, what I will say out of this, okay, because this is the one, is that he talked about, and uh, during a commercial break, Denzel Washington, I guess, was soothing him a little bit, trying to calm things down. He won Best Actor later, alluded to the event uh, at his speech. But what he said, which I thought was an awesome quote from Denzel, Denzel the man, right? Uh, he said to Will Smith at your highest moment, be careful, that's when the devil comes for you. And it's really unfortunate for Will Smith that maybe on the greatest night of his career, um, in terms of winning Best Actor, an Oscar for Best Actor, so many great actors have struggled for so long uh, to win Best Actor of an Oscar. It's going to go down as the night that he just went up there and slapped Chris Rock instead of the night that Will Smith won uh, Best Actor. That's all anyone's going to remember. So... I'm watching this, regardless of what went down, him unfortunately losing his cool over a joke that, yeah, he could have been offended, especially with what his wife is dealing with. She has a condition. I'm sure that makes her uncomfortable when she's sensitive to those facts. Um, if you've seen any of those shows, though, you know that that's how it goes. And so I, I choose to take from that a lesson, folks, because, man, that quote is awesome. When things are going well, folks, all right, be careful. Be aware of yourself, all right? Don't let yourself get too ahead of yourself, and I'm not sure what was going on there, but Denzel trying to tell Will Smith, man, hey, listen, you might win ben Best Actor tonight. Don't, you know, lose your your stuff, we'll say, and uh, and ruin that all. And you, you already almost had 
um, in terms of walking up there and just slapping Chris Rock in the middle of everything, losing his cool. At your highest moment, be careful. That's when the devil comes for you. I like that quote. That's a good quote. I'm going to remember that one, man. Uh, if anything, from that event. That is a good one indeed. All right. Let's jump around to what else we have going on. Uh, so jumping back to the regulators, okay? Finner seems to want broader rules of these products. So again, they're talking about options and they're talking about ETFs. Here's what I will say, folks. Options are defined risk, okay? If they take away the ability for people to trade in defined risk by basically saying, you don't know well enough to do this, that's not right. I was gonna say it's insulting to a lot of people because it is. Many, many people can be brilliant folks in this and to take that away from them, it's gonna be unfortunate if you have to see an onslaught now that somehow it's gonna become difficult for retail traders to be able to trade defined risk products, folks. Um, it's especially tough when you think about, I mean, here's the thing to remember. The phrase, folks, you can't keep a fool and his money from parting, or him and her, whatever you want to call it. There's a certain truth to that. And yes, regulations are good to protect consumers, but at some point they become overburdensome, right? You can't take away many of the investment products that professionals love to use just because you tell them that, you know, they're not up to the task. In the world we're living in, folks, options, the reason why people love them is because they're defined risk options. Uh, I heard our man Dave White saying on the air last week, maybe, or something, saying, you know, I'm looking for severe volatility one way or the other. Uh, the only way I'd be touching this market is with options. I'm sure many people feel the same way. It's tough when you start seeing that, you know, there's going to be a battle here to say retail traders don't deserve access to that, especially at a time that we're going to have gambling exploding. Okay, that has to, oh, who's calling me? That has to be part of the conversation that we're going to have gambling exploding. You can spend as much money as you want betting on the Piston Celtics game, whatever, right? Um, but you can't go in there and buy an option because you're not suited to make that decision. Keep all of that in mind as you see this because you're going to see an onslaught here in a big way. And yes, 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 there are certain areas that I guarantee Robinhood is approving and, and other brokerage, okay? But Robinhood in particular, uh, they're the marquee player that they, I'm sure, okay, have been approving people that do not deserve access to those type of products. But overall, okay, People do understand what an option is. Overall, they do. There's a lot of very bright people, folks. Even if you have a college degree, if you don't, if you're just getting into trading, you understand very easily that you're buying a call, a right to buy an option at this price. You're buying a put, a right to sell uh, a stock at this price. You're buying a call spread, right? You're, you're buying a 40 to 45 call spread. You have the right to buy it at 40. You've sold somebody else the right to buy it back at 45. You have exposure from 40 to $45 in an equity. You've paid $1.50 for that exposure. Just keep it in mind as this conversation persists, because I think you're going to see regulators come at it. You're seeing the, the, you know, the, the writing on the wall here, sending warnings out, sending reminders out. Um, yeah, that's a little bit unfortunate to see, but uh, complex products could include your next crypto ETF, and they want to broaden the rules on these products. So you're going to see that play out in a big way. All right, what else we got going on? Let's jump around to what we have moving this morning. We'll jump around, and we get the NASDAQ up 88 points this morning. We got Bitcoin continuing to rise up 3,100 right now. Let's jump around to some of the tech stocks. NVIDIA, you talk about a run, man. Last Tuesday, I think NVIDIA was up like 10% on that day alone. NVIDIA up half a percent right now. You jump to AMD. AMD down about six tenths percent right now. Some of the chip stocks, Intel down a little bit. They had quite the pop on Thursday as well. And we jump to the yields. Getting a little bit of a reprieve today. We got the 10-year up 12 ticks, 121.29, the 30-year up 29 ticks, and we jump over to the VIX. We got a VIX under 21 on the close of Friday. We're sitting right now at 21.52 in that volatility index right now. We jump around to some of the other equities we'll take a look at right now. Let's take a look at some of the pot stocks. They were rocking last week, giving back those gains. <laughs> Just that quick, folks. And if you are in this equity, all right, or any of the pot equities, folks, you could trade it with defined risk. There's going to be some volatility priced into the options. That's for sure when you get the equities moving 11, 12, 20% in a day. Uh, you got to give yourself some room if you're buying this equity, folks. We do have Canopy in my newsletter. Got into it last week. Fortunate position. If you'd like to try out Rocket Equities and Auctions, head on over to the front page of TFNN under newsletters. As I mentioned, all newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee. Uh, I gave myself a very wide stop, folks. I'll say that.
a stop that you probably put really below the lows. Um, you know, you're getting into this thing at seven bucks and change. You put it on a daily to see the lows. We're gonna zoom in on the action. I mean, there's nothing to say this thing doesn't come back down and touch this low. I don't think that's gonna happen, but if you're trading these equities, getting into it around seven last week, you have to give it some room. And today's action is evidence of that as we're back 11%, but you're only back to where we were trading just on Thursday, March 24th, volatility. Maybe they finally find a bid. We'll see where legislation goes. Stay tuned, folks. We've got one more segment. We'll be right back to finish up the show. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps now positive by four. S&Ps getting driven by some of these FANG stocks, folks. You got Apple now flat, down one-tenth percent right now at 174.56. We opened at 172, though. But look at the action some of the other FANG stocks right now. Amazon, you just popped to 33.66. You're up 1.6% percent for Amazon. Amazon opened flat, folks. So there's a huge run going on right now to the upside. We'll see if it holds. Microsoft shares up 1.9% on the open, man. And, and I'm not sure of what's doing it because Google is flat right now. So it's not like all the FANG stocks are rocking in, but you got Apple higher from their open, Amazon, Microsoft as well trading higher. We jumped to Facebook shares up half a percent with the market, you could say, for Facebook shares right now. Netflix up six tenths percent, giving back some of the gains. Now, Netflix, Apple, uh, I believe their picture won 
Their film won Best Picture last night. Some of the articles getting written this morning saying, man, Netflix has been after that Best Picture uh, nom uh, award for some time. They get beat out by Apple. Nonetheless, keep your eye on those fang stocks, man. Amazon, Microsoft, and Apple all skyrocketing. Microsoft up 2% right out of the gate. You're trading at 310 for Microsoft shares. You put it on a daily. You're bumping up against this area that we were consolidating in basically January Mid, uh, beginning of February, kind of where that second run lower started at. We may face a little bit of a headwind up at 310 on Microsoft shares. All the markets climbing into the positive. Look at the NASDAQ 100. We're above 14,900 right now, up more than a percent in the NASDAQ 100 shares. Remarkable acceleration in strength across the board. And as I said, Apple shares reclaiming all the losses now in the positive. Look at Apple. All these Equities, though, be careful. I just I just talked about it. They're all bumping up against areas, folks, that we turned lower last time. Look at Apple, 175. We traded to up to 175, and then in the heartbeat, you were back down to almost 150 on Apple shares. Microsoft coming up to an area that we were at in the beginning of February as well. Uh, even Amazon, I guess 3,300 would have been that area probably for Amazon. We're now at 33.53 for Amazon shares. Thanks so much for starting your day off with me, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman coming up next. Larry at 11. Fast market. We talk options, folks. You get ed educated about the option market. Fast market with our man Kevin Hinks at 12. Steve Rhodes at 1. Dave White at 2. Right. Till 4. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay tuned.